Hello everyone. One of the things I most enjoy when I'm working with my writer's notebook is to make lists. Uh, I've had writer's notebooks now for almost 40 years and in all of my notebooks you'll find examples of lists. I think that lists are a wonderful stimulus to the thinking of a writer. Um, they help my thoughts become more organised, they help me to brainstorm possible ideas, they help me plan my writing, they allow me to play around with language and words, and they expand the choices that I have as a writer. Uh, today I'm making a list of L words. Now this idea comes from the Encyclopedia of Life, and uh, you just pick a letter of the alphabet and then think of words that are part of your world, your life. Um, so there's a few words that have gone in here already. I've got lollygagging, I've got locomotive, I've got lamington, I've got linguini, I've got lackadaisical. So what I'm going to do later is expand on some of those words. And what I'd also like to do is take you on a journey through some of my lists in my previous notebooks. Uh, so strap in and now we'll go and have a look at some of those notebooks from the past and the wonderful lists that help you become a more considered writer. Lists allow me to practice short forms of poetry such as loons and haiku. I can practice it very quickly down a page by listing various examples of these poetic forms. I can also create lists of ideas that I want to include in a poem, like this one about a leaf. I can also practice lists with repetition, where I repeat a phrase down the page. In this one, I used, if I were, repeating that time and again to create a list poem. I can also practice rhyming verse using rhyming couplets. This one was about opposites. And this one was practicing alliteration by using alphabetical combinations. I can also have fun with wordplay, so important to every writer. So I gather words that I love the sound of, I love the, the look of them, their shape, and what they mean. I love the sound of them trickling off my tongue. Here's an example of a list of non-reversible word pairs. There's only one way to say these. And then I played around with proverbs, mixing them up, changing the endings. All good fun. Idioms are really a wonderful area to explore for any writer. They throw up so many great ideas. Here's one with colours. We don't realise sometimes how much these idiomatic terms are in our language until we sit down and consider them. Here's a list of food idioms. Sayings involving animals. It's amazing how much we use them in our day-to-day -day language without even thinking about them. And here's a list of old ways of saying farewell. Ta-ta, uru, tootaloo, tootle pip. Old words for walking. I love making up this list. I had to do a bit of research and exploring as well, but it was well worth it. And then discovering wonderful old words like spangen and blatter and blurt. Here's words at play, using words in sentences and experimenting and practicing the craft of writing. And then playing around with book titles by changing a single letter. I discovered this on Twitter. Short sentences. Noticing how Jerry Spinelli uses short sentences and lifting them out and listing them in my notebook to remind me, to inspire me. And noticing how he uses 
really powerful verbs in his writing. Here I am playing around with three word book titles, just a bit of fun with language and words. I can use lists to evoke memories, to help me write about memoir in a more meaningful way. This is using the alphabet. But this day I chose the letter B to evoke some memories. Here's a list of childhood games that I played. A sudden flood of memories. So I wrote them down as a list so that I could write about them in more detail later. And things that I'm old enough to remember. Summer scenes, all the memories of summers long gone, summers past. And now a mix of lists, a combination, a potpourri of different ideas. Strange food. I made a list of unusual names, people I've met, famous people. Characters need to have unforgettable names. I made a list of things that upset me. I'm sure we can all do this. We all have our triggers. Things my parents didn't raise me to do. Families are an instant source of inspiration for writing ideas. There are always things happening in families that we can use. It doesn't have to be mum, dad. It could be your brothers and sisters, it could be your family pets, it could be your grandparents, aunts and uncles. There are people in our families that are ever interested. I made a list of things my dad never did. Things that parents have had enough of. Goodness, we heard that enough in our growing up years. Little sounds that seem a lot louder than they actually are because they annoy us. Yes. And then a local list of birds that are on the green behind my house. A bit of bird spotting. Here's a list I made in preparation for a piece of writing about spiders. I also like gathering facts. Facts are ever fascinating as well. Making... Who knows when I might be able to use them in a piece of writing. They're valuable to have though. Ten reasons to travel. Obviously contemplating a trip. But it worked. It helped me focus. And then some things I learnt about that travel in Vietnam. Things I noticed. Observational lists. A list can be prompted by our curiosity of ordinary things we don't know enough of. Here is a spider legs list about sleep. Sweet smells, a list of the sweet smells in my life. So all our senses can be invoked to create lists. I thought about an imaginary story about a superhero and decided what sort of characteristics might my superhero have? Here's a list about things I never want to end. A serving of tiramisu. Here's a couple of pages of ideas about ways to help young writers. This is thinking about my, my life's work. Here is a list of Twitter moments that I've put into my feed. Twitter can be fleeting, but can also give you great ideas. Would I lie to you? Am I telling lies here or am I telling the truth? A bit of wordplay again. And finally, a list about my COVID lockdown life. So there you are. You've had a look at some of my lists. Now it's time for you to consider your lists. I want you to think about the fact that every item that you place on a list becomes a potential writing topic. And isn't that a fabulous idea? Good luck.